Mater Mirror. We saw one of these round one with Cedric Phillips versus Mani Davuti. Jerry is on the same 75 as Cedric. It actually is Jerry's deck that Cedric is playing today. He's playing against Justin Ruby. 14 minutes remaining in the round. They're in game two. Jerry currently up a game. And as we you know, know from the match that we saw round one with Cedric and Mani, and just watching these matchups in general, not really about curving out. The, the game is just about particular cards mattering. You can be a little bit inefficient to the board and just focus on making sure you have the stuff that matters and prevent your opponent from doing the same thing. And that's usually Hornet Queen and Whip of Erebos. Recap where we are on the board. Right now, Jerry was able to curve out with a Siege Rhino. Looks like he had some earlier action with a Seder Wayfinder. Justin, however, also has Wayfinder and carry added. He's the first player to get a Whip of Erebos onto the field, which, as if anything we've seen before matters, is the big prize. Yeah. Though, post-board, these decks are equipped with a lot more answers. Well, Jerry's playing the fair game here. Siege Rhino into Siege Rhino. There's a lot of matchups where this can be game over, if you think about the, Ob the Mardu deck we just saw. But in the mirror, it's possible that they have a lot more weapons to deal with this. And with a whip in play, we don't know exactly the contents of Justin's graveyard right now. Yeah, it looks like his hand is all lands and a commune, so maybe these Siege Rhinos will be enough. Justin is down to eight, as Siege Rhinos are no joke at dealing damage. Yeah, it looks like there's a soul of of Theros in there, which is not very good for Justin right now. Yeah, he's on a similar one. He's actually merged this a little bit with the um, with the Constellation decks. He's playing some Eidolon of Blossoms in his deck. It's interesting to see how there are these... This deck certainly... I think it's still... The jury's out on like what the right build is of it yet. You see uh, anywhere between 5 to 5... To, 15 card differences in versions of this. Yeah. No, there's a lot of room, uh, especially once you have whip and a lot of self milling. There's a lot of upside to having some weird one ofs. So Siege Rhino of Justin's own, that's the top card there. He's going to gain some badly needed life, goes up to 11. And more importantly, he has a four-power creature with Whip of Erebos in play. And it's so interesting. Jerry had a spot where we were, like, thinking, oh, Justin's pretty close to dead, right? And now one Siege Rhino with that Whip, and Jerry can't even attack anymore. If Jerry had a removal spell, if he had an Obzon Charm, he could have made an attack there. But uh, it's net neutral for him to attack right now, so he has to just wait. He does have Hornet Queen in hand. Don't know if he has land number seven. But that's definitely a way of cheating this game if, if Justin doesn't have some sort of response or his own Hornet Queen. Jerry looking through the graveyard here. Yeah. Six lands in play. Hornet Queen does cost seven. And he's got to be concerned of cards like that Soul of Theros in Ruby's graveyard. Looks like Ruby's going to go ahead and whip here. He's going to whip Seder Wayfinder. He goes into Soul of Theros and another Courser into the yard. And that's part of the problem with Soul of Theros in this matchup is it's one you really want to draw. It's okay to mill over, but you're really hoping that thing sticks in play. The Soul of Innistrad, on the other hand, if you happen to draw it, that's great. And if you mill it over, even better. Yeah, that's definitely true. Soul of Theros is better on the cast, but if you're just milling it, Innistrad, I mean, a card that you can mill, that like the Innistrad ability is a great ability to have to, to be able to cast out of the graveyard. Yeah, it fits really nicely into that strategy. And the draw for Jerry, a huge one. It's Reclamation Sage that takes care of the whip, and the Siege Rhinos go back on the attack. And now Justin, who used to have a lot of gas out of his graveyard, now has a hand of very little, and Jerry's still with the Hornet Queen left over in hand. Banishing Light, the draw for Ruby. But he is now behind. He spent that last turn developing his graveyard just to set up for the future, but once Jerry blows up the Whip of Erebos in that turn, ends up not really mattering for much. Yep. So now the question is, does Jerry feel like he's advantaged enough on the board that he doesn't need to add anything else? Or does he let the Hornet Queen rip and hope to finish off the game next turn? There you go, Hornet Queen to play for Jerry. Justin's at seven. That's six power in the air. There's some Siege Rhinos that can trample. Justin needs a draw. And a good one. He drew a Siege Rhino for the turn. It keeps him alive a little, but it doesn't, it doesn't help him make progress. Yep. 
he would like something like a Doomwake Giant here to deal with the Hornet Queen. And Jerry still got him in two turns. He's right. got six in the air and then six in the air next turn. And here's a cincher. Jerry's draft of the turn was a copy of Whip of Erebos of his own. So if before Jerry just had advantage on the board, maybe he wasn't winning the whip fight. Now he'll be ahead on the board and ahead on whips. Yeah. And it's also a huge insurance policy in the event that Justin has something like Dune Blast or in hostilities. Yeah, he would still be dead. If you can get Justin down to four with two Siege Rhinos and playing a whip, then Justin needs a ton of things to go right. And six in the air will be used by Jerry. And I like the patience he uses here, not even playing Whip of Erebos because he doesn't really need it. No reason to have that thing get disenchanted. Uh, again, the way this game is shaping up, Jerry's got it really sewn up here as long as nothing catastrophic happens. And Whip is a great insurance policy against anything too big having. Utter End exiled the Hornet Queen. Relevant that it's an exile as Whip exists. But Jerry will just tap seven for a second Hornet Queen. That's 10 power in the air. Justin is at six. And what this means is even with end hostilities or dune blast, Jerry whips back a rhino and, and that should do it. And there you have it. 2-0. Jerry moves, wins the match and moves on to 3-0 and o here in our standard open. Very well navigated. We didn't get to see a lot of that match, of course, but Jerry is showing some really good discipline, as you mentioned, with a couple of the cards there. Uh, did not overextend when he had an advantage. And I really like leaving the whip as the leftovers to ensure that even Dune Blast or End Hostilities is not enough for Justin to catch back up. Yeah, like you said, he could get Justin low enough that just that if he swept the board, he could just play whip, activate it, and win on the spot with one of the Siege Rhinos. That